Next, we take our population and draw a random sample of people from it, and then randomly split those people into two groups. Some people get assigned to the treatment group, and some people get assigned to the control group. Now, let's just look at the control group. Each person here, once they're assigned to the control group, has to decide, do they take the treatment or do they not take the treatment? This person decided to take the treatment, so they do not comply with their treatment assignment. They were put in the control group, meaning we, the experimenters, did not want them to get treated, but they took the treatment anyway. This person here did comply with our treatment assignment. We put them in the control group and they did not get treated. Now, we only observe one of the sides of this box I mentioned and talked about before. We see what happens to them when they're put in the control group, what their treatment decisions were. We don't see what would have happened to this person if they had been assigned to treatment. Would they have taken treatment or would they not have taken treatment? We don't know. Over here in the treatment group, this person gets treated. So they comply with their treatment assignment. They were put in the treatment group, we wanted them to get treated, and they did. This person does not comply with their treatment assignment. We put them in the treatment group, but they actually don't take the treatment. Now just like in the control group, we only see one of the two sides of this box. We just see that for this person, when they're assigned to the treatment group, they get treated, they take the treatment. We don't see what would have happened to this person if they had been assigned to the control group. Now, we already saw that there's non-compliance in this example because some people are assigned to get treated, but they actually don't get treated. Now, let's think about what kinds of people they, these people are. Let's think about the control group. So over here, this person is assigned to the control group, but actually got treated. So that means that they can't be a complier because a complier would not have gotten treated. They can't be a never taker because a never taker never gets treated, never takes the treatment. So they must be an always taker. This person here and this person here, they must be an always taker. So these two people, they're always takers. What about these guys? Well, this person, they're assigned to the control group and they don't get treated. So they could be a complier. That's exactly what a complier would do. But they could also be a never taker. That's also what a never taker would do. They can't be ne always takers though because an always taker gets treated when they're assigned to the control group. So these two people, they could be never takers or compliers. Let's look at the treatment group, the assigned to the treatment group. This person was assigned to receive treatment and they did. They actually did get treated. So they could be an always taker. They can't be a never taker because a never taker wouldn't have gotten treated. They could also be a complier. So these two people could be either always takers or compliers. Or compliers. What about these people? These people were assigned to the treatment group but did not get treated. So they can't be an always taker and they can't be a complier. They must be a never taker. These people are never takers. Now remember there is a fourth category of people, defiers. A defier is somebody who when they're assigned to treatment doesn't get treated. So this looks like the behavior of a defier, but we've assumed defier is away. So this group in theory could have had a defier or a never taker, but by our assumption we know that this person is actually a never taker. Likewise over here in the control group, this first kind of person could have been a defier because they're assigned to get control, but they actually got treated. But we've assumed that that kind of person doesn't exist, and so we know that these people are always takers. So next we're going to use our knowledge about these kinds of people in the control group and in the treatment group to see how exactly we can compute the local average treatment effect.